You know, on every single Android phone out there, there's a service running in the background that is, without a doubt, one of the most powerful things on the device. It's this silent operator, this invisible gatekeeper you never actually see, but it's the one calling the shots on how your phone talks to the world, how your apps work, and what your phone knows about everything around. So let me just ask you straight up, what do you think it is? What's the most powerful service running on your phone right at this very moment? Is it the Android operating system itself? Maybe your favorite social media app, your web browser? Well, here's the catch. It's a service that doesn't have an icon. You can't launch it, you can't open it, and honestly, most of the time, you probably don't even realize it's there. And yet, if it suddenly stopped working, your phone, as you know it, would pretty much grind to a halt. Okay, let's dive into this. The service we're talking about is Google Play Services. Think of it as the invisible engine at the very heart of the modern Android experience. And today, we're gonna pull back the curtain on what it actually does, what the trade-offs are, and most importantly, how you can take back a little bit of control. So what in the world is it? Well, the best way to think about Google Play services is as a fundamental system brick. It's not an app like you'd find on your home screen. Nope, it's a background service that acts like a bridge, a critical piece of infrastructure connecting the core Android OS to all the apps you use every single day. And what's really wild is just how much this thing does for you. I mean, it's the reason you get your push notifications instantly. It's how apps like Uber or Google Maps get that super accurate location by blending signals from GPS, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. It's constantly scanning your apps with PlayProtect to keep you safe. It gives developers the tools, the APIs for everything from putting a map in an app to letting you pay for things or log in with one tap. It even lets Google send out critical security patches without you having to wait for a full system update from your phone's maker. It is, without a doubt, incredible incredibly useful. But you knew there was a but coming, right? There's always a trade-off. This level of amazing convenience and seamless integration, it doesn't just come out of nowhere. It's not free. So what are we giving up in return for all this slick functionality? Well, the less pleasant truth is that while Google Play Services is busy making your life easier, it's also the central hub for data collection on your phone. It's the main way Google gets a picture of how you use your device, which apps you have installed, and where you go. And this right here really lays out the dilemma perfectly. On the one hand, you get all this comfort and compatibility. Your apps just work, you get useful security features. But on the other hand, you have this central data collection point. It also creates a huge dependency. A lot of apps just flat out won't work without Play Services. And from a security point of view, while it adds some protections, it also creates this one single massive target for anyone trying to find a vulnerability. Okay, to make this a little less abstract, let's zoom way in on one specific and often overlooked feature that's powered by Google Play services. We're gonna take a closer look at the nearby feature. You know that moment when you open a new pair of Bluetooth headphones and boom, a little window just pops up on your phone asking if you wanna connect? Or maybe you've used Nearby Share to just zap a photo over to a friend's phone without having to mess around with texts or cables. If you've done that, then yep, yeah, you've seen the Nearby feature do its thing. It's that little bit of background magic that makes all of your devices just sort of aware of each other automatically. So what is it really? Nearby is basically a whole collection of functions that lets your phone constantly scan for, find, and talk to other devices in the area. We're talking headphones, smartwatches, TVs, other phones. All of it happens without you having to dig into your settings and pair things manually. But here is the absolute key takeaway. And this comes directly from security experts who've analyzed this feature. It is 100% about comfort and 0% vital. Your phone will still make calls, send texts, browse the web, and run all your apps just fine without it. All you really lose are some of those automatic, magical conveniences. And this is exactly why we need to talk about risk. Because that convenience, that always-on awareness that your phone has, it comes with a hidden cost to your security. Now, a lot of people think, oh, nearby is just a fancy name for Bluetooth. But that's not really the whole picture. It's actually a lot more complex and a whole lot more active than just plain old Bluetooth. See, nearby uses an entire stack of different technologies all working together. You've got your classic Bluetooth for active connections, sure, but it also uses something called Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE, for constant passive scanning. Then it uses Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi Direct for faster data transfers. And the whole symphony is conducted by Google's own background services. So what's the big takeaway here? It's not just one radio being on. It's multiple radios and services that are always active, which seriously expands your phone's potential attack surface. And to really get why that matters, let's look at the difference between classic Bluetooth and BLE. Think of classic Bluetooth like a phone call. 
It's an active conversation. It's for moving data like music or files, and it uses a noticeable amount of battery. BLE, on the other hand, is much more like a radar. It's designed for passive listening. It just sends out these tiny constant pings to see what's out there. It uses almost no power, which is exactly why it can be left on all the time, constantly scanning your environment without you even knowing. So how worried should you actually be about this? Well, honestly, it really depends on who you are. For standard, everyday user, the actual risk from these features is pretty low. But if you're a bit more cautious about your digital privacy, or especially if you have what we'd call a sensitive profile, maybe you're a journalist, an activist, or a high-level executive, then the risk of being tracked or even targeted through these radio signals, well, it becomes very real. More services running just means more doors and windows for someone to try and get through. The good news in all this is that since this feature is 100% for convenience, you can turn it off without breaking any of the essential functions of your phone. So let's walk through exactly how you can take control and shrink that tax surface. All right, let's do this. The first path is the most direct one. First, you're gonna open up your phone's main settings app. Now scroll down until you find the entry for Google and tap on that. Inside the Google settings, look for an option that says devices and sharing, tap it. Okay, you'll see two really important things in here. Let's start by tapping on devices and just turn off that little toggle that says scan for nearby devices, perfect. Now hit the back button once, and this time tap on Nearby Share, and make sure that main switch at the top is also turned off. That shuts down the main parts of the feature. Okay, now this is super, super important to mention. Android isn't the same on every single phone. Depending on what version of Android you have, or if you're using a Samsung, a Pixel, or some other brand, the exact names of these menus might be a little different. So you might have to poke around a bit, look for words like connections or connected devices, but the things you're trying to turn off are still nearby share and device scanning. But hold on, we're not quite finished yet. Turning those off is a fantastic first step, but there's kind of a hidden trap. Even with those settings off, your phone might still be using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in the background for a completely different reason, to improve its location accuracy. So for our second and really crucial step, you need to go back into your main settings menu again. This time, find and tap on location. Inside that menu, you're looking for a sub-menu often called location services or something similar. Tap that. And right there, you should see separate toggles for Bluetooth scanning and Wi-Fi scanning. Go ahead and turn both of them off. This tells your phone to stop using its radios to passively scan for networks and devices to figure out where you are. This ensures that when your Bluetooth is off, it is truly off. You know, when you boil it all down, after going through all of this, it really just comes down to a simple idea. It's your phone, and it ought to be your choice. So the most important point is this, every single time you just accept a default setting on your phone, you are making a choice, whether you realize it or not. In this specific case, it's a choice between that seamless automatic comfort that a feature like Nearby gives you and the deliberate conscious control you get back by turning it off. There's no right or wrong answer for everybody, but the point is, now you can make an informed one. And that really just leaves us with one last thought to chew on. We just took a really deep dive into one single automatic feature, but think about it. How many others are running on your devices right now? What other little conveniences have you accepted without really thinking about the trade-offs? It might just be time to take a second look.